the presentation. Yeah, I would like to start the presentation um, based on the discussion, project coordination, and conferences with uh, a couple of companies and academic uh, partners that we have been working together. So the topic for today is called Moving from 5G to 6G, the recent core research activities in, in Europe. So the main players actually for um, 5 and 6G mobile communication, if you're talking about um, the industrial partners or industrial um, active uh, providers, um, they're normally actually in, in Asia. So which are Samsung and uh, Huawei and ZTE, but of course all these companies, they also have the research base in both uh, Europe and America. And um, we also have uh, two big companies here in Europe, which are Ericsson and uh, Nokia, which we also <clears throat> will be talking about. So um, there are a couple of things that I would like to conclude actually regarding the 6G communication that we are moving forward to. I know that currently we are still in the 5G eras, but there's a lot of... Uh, can someone mute the microphone, please? So if you could, please, can you mute all your microphone? Thank you. So... So, and uh, okay, now I unmuted myself because I, I guess I was muted as well. So the moderator just muted the whole the whole chat room. But anyway, um, I I guess you can hear me now. So yes. there are a couple of things here that I would like to 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 mention. I know that at the moment we are still working on five G, and there's a lot of research going on, and the five G is just going on for just a couple of years, and people started talking about six G communications already, especially in. Uh, Scandinavian countries like Finland and Sweden, where they are actually the, the main player in 6G development in Europe. So what are the differences between 5G and 6G? And that is what we would like to discuss today. So the first one is uh, the important messages regarding 6G. So actually, 6G is going to be developed to solve problems, not to have the solution first and then find the application, but we will find the applications for 6G first. So this is the other way around when we try to develop um, 3G or 4G or even 5G. 6G is is the other way development, meaning that we will see the applications for 6G first, and we try to develop the, the specification, the technical development for that applications. So one of the other thing is 6G is going to be hyper-connecting the, con the already connected. So apart from the fact that the mobile users will be connected from time to time to the base station or to the service provider. So <clears throat> when they need the, the service, they will be connected. And then when they don't need the service, they will be not connected to save the energies, to save the air time. So, but for 6G, that will be different. So it will be hyper-connected which means it will be connected all the time. It will be active all the time with the service provider. And they will also connect the unconnected, which means that whatever is not connected will be connected. So this is the, this is the concept of not just internet of things, but this will be the concept of internet of everything 
which means that everything will be connected to the mobile and wireless communication. For example, you know, cars will be comprehensively connected for <clears throat> the autonomous driving, for example, for sensing, and there will be a lot of data uh, communicating between cars. Yeah, they will say from car to car communication, or there will be the connection between car and the <clears throat> base stations, and even car to mobile phone, not just to con basically control the car, that is not the case anymore. There will be some kind of more comprehensive communication between car and your phone. So the next stage is the artificial intelligence will be the core technology for 6G communication. So we will call this a little bit more or less on self-aware wireless communication, where AI will play a lot of important roles that we will discuss later in 6G. And the fourth bullet point is the seamlessly um, merging between sensing and uh, wireless communication and intelligence. So the very important development here that the base station, for example, will not be the base station to just transmit and send the communication data. It will be installed by the other thing as well. For example, it will be installed with radar. It will be installed with leader even. So it will be installed with camera, um, even uh, infrared camera to make it more or less like a smart uh, sensing unit that is merged with the communication. So we call this a uh, concept harmonized communication, at least at Huawei, they call that. And we will try to go for beyond applications that we've been using now, for example, we will try to go for some very harsh uh, application like holographic display where we can display 3Ds from, for example, your mobile phone. So that is also one of the, the concept in 6G. So the, the, the idea of developing 6G is more or less opposite from 5G. From 5G, we have the system first, we develop the system and we ask what we can do with this system. But on 6G, we, uh, we have the application first. Let's say, for example, from car-to-car -car communication, robotics, wireless surgery, holographic display, and uh, comprehensive sensing system. Then we try to define the technical stuff for this application. So this is what we, we, we are working on at the moment. So the dominant use cases, as I mentioned before, so it will be sensing and intelligence, we call this harmonized communication. So we connected the AI all together. So it's not the internet of things, it will be also internet of AI. So where you have the AI that can communicate with each other. So, and then there will be wireless communication through air, which of course that's quite normal medium of wireless communication. There will be communication to, through ground, so wireless communication will be connected to the ground communication. And also we use a C medium for, for communication. And of course the other use cases that will be also very important is industri industrial internet of things. That is one of the main uh, development goals for all the key players in 6G communication like Huawei or ZTE. So the key technologies here, I highlight something that is uh, very important. And also, of course, there will be the other things down there as well. So there are a couple of uh, technologies here that people are actually focusing. So the first one is, of course, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. And we call also use the wireless fusion with the native AI and AI air interface. So AI will be everywhere in the base station, in the wireless network, for example. 
So we have AI in, in the RAN system to reconfig the parameters in the, in the RAN so the user will be uh, served with the best quality of service, QoS, and best quality of experience, QoE. And then the second technologies that will play the very important role in 6G is uh, millimeter wave and terahertz technology because we want to have much wider bandwidth compared to what we are having now. So when we are talking about sub terahertz or millimeter wave, we are not talking about just only 28 gigahertz anymore. So we are thinking about 60 gigahertz, even 90 gigahertz for a millimeter wave and for terahertz, we are talking about 300 to uh, 200 to 300 megahertz, uh, gigahertz, sorry, for the terahertz band. So this is going to be a kind of a mix of frequencies in the wireless system. Uh, for example, what is the main difference for 5G? 5G, we are talking about lower band, for example, uh, sub six gigahertz and now, so many companies are developing sub 10 gigahertz uh, equipment. And then uh, they're talking about millimeter wave at 28 gigahertz to 32 gigahertz. And that is all for, uh, for 5G communication. But for 6G, we are talking with all the frequencies that are actually available below 10 gigahertz, as we say sub 10 gigahertz, millimeter wave, 30 gigahertz up to 60 gigahertz up to 90 gigahertz and also uh, the terahertz from 200 to 300 gigahertz that what we that what we also think of so and then apart from the basic um, network that we have from 5g and below so we are talking about more comprehensive connections with the non-terrestrial internet or network or ntn here we will have a massive, very low orbit, a uh, very low Earth orbit satellite. So we are talking about satellites to become the wireless base station, which is much more comprehensive. And we say it's massive because it's going to compose of a few thousand units of VLEO to form the global uh, 6G network. We also have the HUB, which is a high altitude platform. And if you could think of this is what Google and Amazon has been developing, which they use the balloon or the drone with a very high attitude to perform the base station for some uh, rural area or the unpopulated area. We also have satellite backhaul that will have the coverage covering all type of, of area. So these are the key uh, technological developments that people have been doing. People in this case mean the world leaders like Huawei or uh, Ericsson, Nokia and ZTE. So, and then the fourth bullet point is the sensing and intelligence that we just discussed before that we will have the AI to control a lot of things, though, so the communication process will be completely and 100% automated. And the sensing will be also integrated with the base station. For example, the base station will know exactly where you are with the position accuracy within less than one centimeter. They will also know the user's behaviors so the fifth bullet point is, of course, we are talking about ultra low power wireless system here because it will be more and more power consumption in the future. So we will talk about that later, but we will develop ultra low power wireless communication system there. And of course, what we are also talking now is the zero touch service management, which means the service for the user will be 100% automated by AI and ML they will learn the user's behaviors and then they will config the parameters of the service according to the user's demand. So we can call this also the service on demand automated by um, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Then we will also move to zero world, which means there will be zero latency. 
So in case that you need to have this kind of extremely fast uh, wireless connection with extremely slow, uh, with extremely low latency or ideally zero latency. For example, in the um, autonomous driving where you cannot have the delay in the signal transmission Otherwise, you might have a kind of car accidents. So you need this zero latency system there. Also zero energy. So we try to invest less and less energy in the system. So ideally, we try to optimize the energy to the zero level. So our 6G network will not draw or consume so much uh, power there because then the operator we have to invest a lot of money in into the power um, <clears throat> and then finally this is a zero error system as well which means that we will try to minimize error in the system error in this case means data communication and data transmission so we try to develop the signal coding the data coding that we will receive zero signal errors there. So, and also we will link the 6G development to the UN goals. <clears throat> for example, we will, uh, we will use 6G for smart farm, smart village, and also smart cities. So we move from tech-centric to human-centric. And then, um, I, will, um, I will skip some of these uh, bullet points, I guess. So we will have also the autonomy, trust and control. So one of the most important things here is whether we can actually trust the system that we are using. I think that is one of the main key um, issues that Hover is having now that uh, so many people don't trust their system. For example, the United States and a lot of countries in Europe, they don't trust the, the system developed by Huawei. So people are trying to develop this kind of uh, trustworthy system for, for 6G in terms of, for example, open RAN, open a radio access network. So people can choose like what we are doing with our computer now to choose, for example, RAM from one company, the CPU from the other companies, and then they put um, this component together. But there are a lot of uh, problems there with the open runs uh, that we possibly, if we have time, we will discuss that also later. Now we'll see the roadmap from big names here uh, with Ericsson, Huawei, SATTE, and possibly I forget them. Um, Nokia to be included in there. I think um, there are some consistencies here between these big companies. And one of the main goal is they want to deploy the 6G uh, system in, 20, uh, in 2030. So which is around eight, nine years from now. So there are a lot of development going on already in Europe for at uh, 6G. So let's say in, in 2019, the World Radio Communication Conference, so they identify terahertz spectrum, uh, especially from 275 to 450 gigahertz for 6G communication. The ITUR, which is for radio, uh, recent, recently initiated the discussion about technology trends with upcoming 6G vision and requirement study. So the IMT 2030 is planning with the aim to set them by 2030, which means the 6G network would be redeployed by 2030. And the community 3GPP will conduct 6G feasibility study after five years of 5G commercialization, um, which is R21. You can see R21, for example, uh, in SATTE, that is the breakdown of R21, which is around um, 
2025, they will review the 5G and then they will say, okay, this is the gap for the 5G and then we have to bridge the gap for 5G and we have to implement this in 6G, for example. But as we could see here, there's, there are a lot of uh, developments already for these big names company and the 6G will be expected to be uh, deployed in 2030. So now we come a little bit into details. So in 6G, millimeter wave will mature, with, which means that millimeter wave will be completely used at the band of, for example, 20 gigahertz, uh, 28 gigahertz, 31, 32 gigahertz. But as of now, we still don't see that clearly for, for 5G, I would say we have to wait for a little bit of more time. So we will see the uh, mature uh, millimeter wave technologies in 5G, I would say possibly not before 2025, but for sure we will see that before 6G. So in 6G, millimeter wave will be mature. Uh, will, and, and the frequency above 100 gigahertz, so towards the terahertz technology, will be acted as an add-on bit. It is more or less like what we are having now, but what we are having now, the mainstream frequency will be, well, not will be, but is below 10 gigahertz. And then 28 gigahertz, 32 gigahertz are add-ons for the current 5G technology, but they will change that in the future. So the sensing is the potential candidate service on top of the enhanced EMBB, so EMBB is Enhanced Mobile Broadband. So where we need to use a lot of uh, uh, high data rate there. So this, these are three main service pillars for 5G. The first one is EMBB. So Enhanced Mobile Broadband, where the bandwidth and the data rate is the main consideration for the applications we will have or we already have URLLC, which is ultra reliable, low latency communications. So the, uh, the applications that would need this communication type is for example, remote surgery, autonomous vehicle, and this kind of a real time sensing and communication, they will need this kind of URLLC. And then the, the final pillars that we have in the 5G and also will be in 6G is the M MTC, which is the massive machine type communication. So we are talking about numbers of machines that, are, uh, that can be connected at the same time in the same small area. So these are the three uh, applications and communication ways that uh, we already have in 5G and what uh, Huawei says is the sensing will be uh, emerged into 5G. So we will have this kind of harmonized communication where we have sensors and communication integrated in, in the base station and so on. So we will have also AI and ML to support the paradigm shift for wireless communication. For example, joint source channel coding, uh, federated and cooperated learning for low latency and privacy. We will have also kind of more than conventional way of wireless communication based station. So we will use um, massive VLEO. So we will also use this kind of uh, unmanned vehicles or UAVs to act as base station for in the future for 6G, the base station will not be static and, it, uh, and they will not be fixed at a place. So the future 6G base station, they can move, they can fly around, they can drive around. So that is what the vision for 6G base station is. So, and also the position accuracy for the radio localization for 6G. So for indoor, the accuracy will be less than one centimeter and uh, for the outdoor, it will be less than 50 centimeters. 
So, uh, for Huawei here, so the main key uh, technologies that they are developing now is AI telehertz, unconventional base station like VLEO, and also unconventional uh, mobile networks. So now we come to the study where we have uh, terahertz as one of the key player for 6G development. So I'm not gonna go uh, into details uh, with all these graphs though, but what I can summarize here is, so there is a bright future above 100 gigahertz to be used in 6G communication. So, but unfortunately we are not expecting that this terahertz uh, communication channel will be used from, for example, a mobile unit there or your handset there. Because one of the things that we are thinking is when we use much higher frequencies here, then normally we have a lot of problems. Of course, on the bright side, then normally we have much larger bandwidth. The antenna size will be much smaller. But on the other hand, the battery that is running your mobile phone the battery life will be much, much shorter and we don't want the mobile phone to be operated for a couple of hours only. So normally the terahertz link or the millimeter wave link here for what you will see is going to be in the base station, especially for backhaul commu uh, communication. So we try to um, remove the optical fiber, we want to use terahertz link if we could, or we try to combine the optical link, optical, uh, in this case mean optical fiber, and also we also use the, we want to also use the terahertz link there. In the case that the optical uh, cable cannot be used, for example, in the rural area, where it is something like 100 kilometer away from the city, where we, it is not worth to spend money to, to put the cable there. So we can use uh, either optical links, wireless optical links, we call it free space optic. And also we can use the telehealth link there to link the remote user to the base station. So of course, when we say we are gonna use the telehealth as uh, the communication link, people will say, what about the free space loss here? So because this is, the, this is the problem of physics here that you can, of course, radiate the telehealth in the air, but the loss is going to be massive. For example, you can see the, in the pictures, all the pictures here that I put. So you can see that the loss, for example, the third pictures uh, from the left hand, the loss is quite clear that 140 gigahertz will be much more than 28 gigahertz. So in this case here for 6G, we will not use the basic antennas that we have been using in 3 or 4G, and we will not use the key technologies in 5G too. So in 5G, I have to say that what uh, the key technology for 5G is the massive MIMO. In 6G, we plan to enhance that massive MIMO to become something else. Either we can say it will be an involution or it will be a revolution, depending on the, the requirements in the future. So as of now, there is no single standard for 6G. So that is what I can say. So let's come back to what we're discussing. We say the free space loss or the radiation loss of the signal is gonna be massive for terahertz. So for 6G communication, the antenna gain is actually the critical parameters here to compensate the free space loss. So in the future for 6G wireless communication, we will use super massive MIMO that compose of possibly at least a couple of thousand antenna elements, or we could use the other technologies like beam steering, beam forming, 
and holographic beam forming, for example, that is the key technology that people have been developing for for 6G now. So, but what in a nutshell is we will need need much higher antenna gain to compensate the loss of the terahertz radiation in 6G. So now the vision from SATTE is, so they want to have um, intelligently connected physical and digital worlds. So for the potential use is the internet of sense, and then we will have to we will have the, then we have the internet of AI, and then we also have the internet of industries. So first of all, what is the internet of sense? Internet of sense in this case, you can say this is for example for the uh, visual reality. So the we uh, the VR that you can, for example, play tennis with your friends when you are at your home and your friend is at you at their home. So for example, that you can play tennis that way with this uh, 3D VR. So they, uh, they call this uh, connected uh, physical, uh, sorry, connected uh, internet of senses. And another, uh, another example for the internet of senses is for example, you don't have to go to visit the place. If you want to travel, you can travel from home. For example, you can sit in Thailand and then you can say you can travel to Paris by using these 3D VR glasses or uh, whatever means that the operator will develop in the future to travel without actually traveling. So that is the internet of sensors. And then we have the internet of AI where they can connect different types of AI together. They will learn to know each other and then they will work together and then uh, one of the most important things that they are developing is the Internet of Industries. So they, they will, they will uh, develop the uh, connections between industries. They will develop the so-called um, the IoT from uh, for industries where everything in the factory, for example, are connected together through AIs and everything is going to be automated using AI. So in this case for 6G, um, what they're doing is to support or to develop the intelligent radio and intelligent evolution. And of course, intelligent coverage for SAPTE. These are the main uh, development points for SAPTE at the moment. So now we come to a much more details here. So the innovations developed is current uh, is being developed at SAPTE to address 6G challenges is first of all the EMUSA. So the EMUSA, sorry, I have lost control of. Uh, I have lost control of my mouth. Just one moment, please. There we are. Okay, we have Emusa, which is the enhanced multi-user share access. So we will, we will try to share the access and <clears throat> the connections between uh, a lot of users. And we also have IRS, which is the intelligent reflective surface and uh, MIMO working together for beam steering and beam forming to improve the um, connections and the radiation of the signal at a millimeter wave. And even in um, terahertz wave, we also have the service-based architecture, SBA, RAN. RAN is the radio access network. So there are a couple of things here that, uh, that are being developed. So as I mentioned, they developed the, the radio front end here, which is the, uh, the intelligent 
a reflective surface and also MIMO, as I mentioned. They're developing the RAN radio access network here. They're developing the AI-led LDPC decoder for, as I mentioned, zero error uh, data communication. And they are also developing the terahertz channel modeling because at the moment there are no one uh, developing this. P possible to the zoom the 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 slide because it's difficult to see like uh, uh -huh. possible mm -hmm. uh, zoom zoom in. in okay thank you thank you very much so that is comment in the chat ah uh, okay yes I can zoom this in of course. Sorry, um, the thing is, this is kind of the collection of um, presentation and project meeting between the partner that I'm working with. So that's why. Um, but anyway, yes, I can, I can, I can zoom the slide in. Yes. So and then, of course, the final point here is, is the terahertz modeling uh, of the channel and the frequency spectrum. So what you're seeing here, if you could see my mouse. So what you are seeing here is the challenges and the innovations that would be uh, developed by SATTE. For example, we still have these three pillars here. So uh, like EMBB, they were, they were now said ultra EMBB, so they make it much, much bigger. So they, uh, they still also have uh, MMTC, but now they want to define this MMTC for example, with the on-body MMTC or variable MMTC, they also still have this uh, ULLC, but they want to define the applications now. For example, they want to use this ULLC for autonomous system, like um, self-driving car and also in robotics. So I think this will be too much this will also be too much. So these pictures, these two pictures here are associating with what I, I just mentioned already here. Uh, I just have to go back. Uh, okay, now I have, I, I think I have lost where I, uh, let's zoom out a little bit more. There we are. So now this is the vision for Ericsson. So previously, this is a, the, this is a, the vision from SATTE, and uh, this is a vision from Huawei. So I put two slides for the vision of each big names company here. And now uh, this is the vision of of Ericsson. So normally, to be honest, Ericsson doesn't define much at the moment for 6G. So what they are saying at that is that uh, towards the 6G, what they are trying to plan at the moment is the non-limiting connectivity. You can be connected anytime, anywhere. It doesn't really matter how many users they are. So you will get the service. You will get good quality of service and you will get good quality of experience. So what they are trying to define is, first pillar is the connectivity everywhere. As I mentioned, there will be no um, areas that we have no service especially in the rural area where it is unpopulated or just a couple of users, you will find the service even in deep jungle so that the other uh, communication system couldn't serve, for example, 5G, 3G or 4G. So now even you go to the deep jungle in the Amazon, then you will still get the service, for example, using the satellite connections there to to be immersed into 6G mobile base station. You have joint communication and sensing 
as we say, so the region between Ericsson and Huawei is pretty much the same. So you will have this kind of harmonized communication where you also integrate sensing system into your base station. These sensors can be, for example, radar to detect your location and then learn the user behaviors and try to adjust the, the parameters specific to that users. You will have also leader to be developed at the perception unit in the base station to even detect much more accurate uh, location of the users. And you have also zero cost, zero energy devices, which means that uh, the energy consumption will be much, much lower. And in this case, you can say it's zero energy if we develop also energy harvesting into the system. And what I'm saying energy harvesting in this case is not restricted to the conventional one. You can use, for example, the energy harvesting system from um, the sun. You can use the power from wind. So they also call this sustainable uh, energy system or wireless communication. So the 6G will use less and less the conventional way of energy. And they will use the renewable energy, a lot of the renewable energy to replace this conventional one. And of course, the final vision from Ericsson is still also uh, AI air interface, which means in the radio access network, for example, in RAN, you will find a lot of AI that will study the conditions of the um, radiation medium or wireless communication channel. And then they will learn how to adjust the parameters for the users according to that channel. And then of course there are a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, more detailed stuff there, but I think uh, it will be beyond what I would like to say. So, this is, um, uh, and this one is also uh, for Nokia. So the guys here on the bottom right there, he is the, one of the key um, researchers at Nokia for uh, 6G development. And you could see here, they're still pretty much the same. You know, they're still pretty much the same um, developments and key planning here for uh, Nokia compared to Huawei, SATE, and also Ericsson. So they use network as a sensor. This is a harmonized communication that we just discussed. They will use new spectrum technologies. And normally this is millimeter wave and also terahertz wave. And then they will use AI ML interface to learn the conditions of the wireless channel and then try to adjust the parameters uh, to increase or to maximize the quality of service and the quality of experience. They will uh, have a lot of uh, common visions here compared to, compared to um, Huawei, ZTE and Ericsson. But what they can say specifically for them is, for example, they want to use real-time AI ML uh, air interface optimization process, which means this is going to be very suitable for the URLLC where the application will need virtually zero latency, such as in car-to-car -car communication, in autonomous system, self-driving system. And also the spectrum that they are aiming to use is a little bit less from what Huawei and ZTE are targeting. So for Nokia, they want to develop uh, the 6G at D band, which is what, around 140 to 180 gigahertz. And then they want to have unification of physical, digital, and biological worlds, which can be merged together. So, and now this is the vision from key site technologies. And uh, most likely, of course, they are talking about measurements that they can provide to this future 6G communication. So since they said, okay, in 6G wireless communication, the aim is to provide the data rate higher than one terabit per second per user compared to 5G communication, which we can have the maximum data rate of 10 gigabit per second. So this is gonna be more than 100 times compared to 5G communication. 
And the key talk, uh, the key technologies here that they are targeting is also, for example, the way how to use uh, terahertz in the system. And then this is also one of the main key that people are developing as well. They want to have the optical system immerse and to be integrated with the uh, base station and the wireless communication. So 6G will not be just RF millimeter wave terahertz. It will also be optical there, for example. Yeah, for example, the Li-Fi will be integrated into 6G communication. The free space optic will also be integrated in, in 6G communication. And then of course, uh, since all these frequencies will be integrated, so we will have a very complicated radio system here. So Keysight is working on the design and the testing of this complicated uh, radio system here. For example, they want to develop their software like Keysight Advanced Design System to be able to integrate all design frequencies in uh, one design. And also they want to develop the tools that can test all this um, very high speed and complicated um, uh, wireless system here. So these are the top 10 technology 10 trends for 6G communication. So first of all, one is AI fusion. So we have the internet of AI. We will have AI to optimize the quality of service. We will have AI to optimize quality of experience. We will have AI to uh, automate the, the system. So I would say, or people say, 18% of the trends or of the research funding or of the research activities is now going towards the wireless AI fusion. And then the next very, very important topics here, as you could see, I highlight the topics, the top three ones. So we know that these are the main uh, topics here that is funded by big names company like Nokia, Huawei, Ericsson, and also it is funded by the European Commission here. So the first one I, I mentioned already is the wireless artificial intelligence fusion. And the second one is the millimeter wave and terahertz technology, where we will need um, much, much uh, higher antenna gain. So in this case, we want to go for something totally different from massive MIMO, for example, to AI assisted intelligence meta surface. And also we can say, we can go towards the um, holographic beam forming, for example. And the third one, the third bullet point is ultra low power system, where the system consume less energy, where the system can also generate uh, power for, for itself. For example, we can integrate uh, energy harvesting here. We can integrate, um, for example, green energies here into the system. And then of course you have quite a few technologies there as well. <clears throat> so this is the key researcher in Europe here, Professor Emil Bjornsson from Linköping University in Sweden. So what he's trying to, to say here, I would say possibly you don't have to see all these curves here, but what he's trying to communicate to us here is for the current wireless communication system as in 4G and 5G, we are actually using massive MIMO here yeah, and also relay system here in, in the current modern wireless communication. In the future, this thing is gonna be changed. Yeah, this thing is going to be changed. We will use the intelligence uh, reflective surface based on meta surface here uh, to, uh, to um, remove this massive MIMO and then replace the massive MIMO with the IRS. So I have a, a couple of uh, remarks here. 
So the RRS versus relay, the large size of the RRS is needed to be the relay. For example, 200 elements at three gigahertz. So this is gonna be kind of um, massive antenna size here. We are not talking about 64 components. We are not talking about 32 components as in massive MoIMO. So what we are talking now is more than some hundred elements or even thousand elements here. So for 6G communication, so this is gonna be norm for, uh, to, to, to develop the 6G communication system. So, and then we have the intelligent reflexive surface here versus massive MIMO. The IRS will have, of course, worse signal to noise ratio, but then we can actually have more communication flexibilities here. And the problem with the signal to noise ratio for the IRS here, this is one of the current hot research topics for all these companies and also for academia here. And the IRS is not as a specular reflectors. So this is a well, this is the lens in the near field to focus the beam, and this is a beam formal in far field. So uh, this is the way how we will use the IRS in the 6G communication. So we will confine the radiated field, and then we also we will also form or direct the 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 radiated field. So we will use it as a beam former and also the beam steering at the same time. So, and also we have the potential use cases here. Uh, I have to zoom out a little bit so you could see. And then uh, the current hot research topic for the IRS is for example, is the control interface because we will have a couple of hundred antenna elements here or radiation elements to be more precise, or we will even have some thousand elements in some case for the IRS. So how we can control these each and individual components, or oh, it's gonna be very complicated for the control circuit and the control interface. And then of course we will want, we would like to increase the quality of service, especially in terms of signals to noise ratio for much bigger than the massive MIMO. So how can we do it? So this is also one of the, the main research topic going on now in Europe. So now uh, what we also have in 6G, as I mentioned before, is we will also have the photonics and optics to be integrated in 6G. So apart from AI that will be integrated in 6G, apart from the millimeter wave at 28 gigahertz, 60 gigahertz, even 90 gigahertz to be integrated in 6G, apart from 270 gigahertz to three, 400 gigahertz, we will also have the optical system to be integrated in the 6G communication. So for example, we will have the optical inspired um, radio network there. For example, we will have, for example, in this part here in the dot box, in the dotted box here, this is the way how we uh, detect the, uh, of, uh, the photonics or the optical uh, signal here. And then we want to use uh, the optical or the photonic system and convert the conventional way of the RAN into the photonic RAN by integrating this photonic stuff in the um, 6G communication system. Of course, also, as I mentioned there, we will also integrate the leader there. And the leader is the radar, but in the optical domain. So to, 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 to say it in the easy, in, in the very easy way. So the leader is the radar, but in the optical domain. So we will also integrate this leader into the base station to have the perception unit 
to see where the user is in the very accurate, accurate uh, way. As I mentioned, the accuracy for the indoor is one centimeter, while the out, for the outdoor is 50 centimeter. So that is one of the thing. And we will also have the Li-Fi. Um, we will also have the Li-Fi to be integrated in the 6G apart from the Wi-Fi. So the Li-Fi is the Wi-Fi, but in the optical domain where we use the LED light or the lighting system in your house to communicate or to, to be connected to the base station and transmit the, uh, the, the signal there. All right, I think it's about time. So I'm going to skip this one and this one because I already said, I already talked about it. And then the last one, is, which is uh, still not discussed is the all band in one poles architecture, which means in one mobile station and in one base station, we will have to integrate all these bands here, as you can see, 700 megahertz, 800, 900, 1.5 gigahertz, 1.8, 6.6 6 gigahertz, 28, uh, 28 gigahertz, and possibly up to some terahertz. So it is very challenging to integrate all these bands into uh, just one base station. So normally what Huawei or what the other people are doing is just to have a separate set of hardware for each to service, uh, for each for each band to service the user. But in the future for 6G, this is not the case. So in the future, we will try to use reconfigurable hardware. So to use maybe a, a, just a couple of set of hardware and use the tuning capability based on, for example, semiconductor technologies, MEM technologies, to tune the hardware to serve all these bands and to get the all, all band in one pose here. So I think that is, yeah, that is all that I would like to say. And it's exactly one hour. So thank you very much for your attention. I will hand it back to the moderator. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, time for this card or any question? หรือใครมีคําถามภาษาไทยก็น่าจะได้อยู่นะครับครับถามพอดิสคัชชั่นแอนนิเคชั่นเยสไอซีวันเดอร์โอเคโอเคอ่าฟอร์สต์ออฟ
standard here for serial latency. So we actually don't know how close it is going to be for serial latency there. Serial energy in this case, I think it is possible because zero, uh, zero power, zero uh, energy here is actually a little bit kind of cheating because zero latency here combines extremely low power consumption with the energy harvesting in the system, which means that of course you try to develop the hardware that consume less energy. And then in the system, in your 6G system, you can also generate that energy that your system needs to fulfill that hardware requirement. So in this case, you can say actually at the end of the day, this is a zero energy system because the sum of the, the, sum of the energy that will be consumed by the hardware of your system and the, uh, and the energy that you can generate by using, for example, the energy harvesting technique, like, I don't know, um, the solar cell system, like the wind, system like whatever type of system that people have been developing at the end of the day the sum of the energy consumed and the sum of the energy that can be generated will be zero so i know it sounds a little bit strange to 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 claim that this is a zero energy world but this is what they say and the zero errors i'm also with you that this is an extremely difficult a way to develop, but for example, what Nokia, no, not Nokia, what SATTE is doing is to develop the AI LDCP uh, encoder, for example, yeah, to try, try to minimize the, the error of the transmitter signal to be very close to zero error as possible. But again, as I mentioned, there is still no standards. There is still no defined parameters for 6G. So everyone is, is trying to, to sell their business. Everyone is trying to, 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 to show that they have the vision and they are the leaders of the world. So that's why they propose this type of, of zero world system here, which of course, some of them can be done some of them, we don't know whether it can be done. Some of them, I'm sure it cannot be done, but they, want, they just want to make it fancy. That is what I can say. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think, I think we are the same side. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like for, for the engineer, it's like the marketing term, by the way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh, exactly. We have a quick question, quick two question. I, I think you 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 touched a little bit about HAP, H A P high altitude platform. Yes. Um, I would like to to know the the situation there in 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 Europe country, European country. Um, are there any commercials already, or what is no and, and what yeah. is and what is the the regulation there? Yeah. Are there uh, the regulation there? No, this is this is a problem. This is a problem now. So there is still no commercialization of the hub now, and the the companies that are trying to develop the hub in in the EU, I don't see of the much big activities here to be honest. But in the US, yes, you have seen Facebook has been doing it. You have seen. Amazon.com has been doing it, but in the EU, I I don't think there are some kind of concrete, uh, concrete solution there, and not to mention the commercialization. I think is is far from realistic now. I would say not even in five years. For example, I'm having the project here that I would like to turn the drone, not even the hub, just basic drone into the mobile base station, like the on-demand mobile base station. For example, if we consider, yeah, if we consider uh, the scenarios like in the concert hall or in the sports stadium, where from time to time you need a lot of uh, traffic and communication information to, com uh, to communicate 
um, the data there, you want to have the video streaming, you want to transmit video files there, but not all the time. So what we are trying to do is we're trying to send the swarm of drones to act as a base station where we have the events like the concert events into the concert hall. And then when there is no concert in the concert hall, then we call this um, drone base station back to, to, to the base. So that's what we have been doing now and is still on progress. Uh, what Nokia is doing now, which is, I would say closest to what you are saying, but from, from, from my side is still so far away, is Nokia has been developing the way that they use the drone to cache the base station and then move it around the city. So in this case, we have two entities here. The first part is the base station, which is the cube or the small box, let's say, with the solar cell on top. So they can, they can harvest the energy there. And then they use the drone to pick up the base station and to drop it on top of the, the building, for example. So, and then they said, okay, this type of the base station can be used in the scenarios like where you have earthquake in the area. So all the mobile infrastructure there is broken where you have the flooding system there where the electricity is down. So you use this kind of the cube base station and then carry it by drone and moving them around and act like the, the mobile base station. But I haven't seen any further action from Nokia since then. So I would say for the hub, I don't see much of the activities now compared to the US. Okay, thank you very much. I think I have a couple quick questions. Um, the first that uh, you mentioned about drone. Let's say here in Thailand, if you want to have drone in your commercial, you have to have two license from first for, for to having drone and another license is for to control drone. Are there any yes. regulations that in in European yes, countries? Yes. Exactly, exactly the same thing. For example, in the UK, if you want to fly the drone, then you need to have the license. But the government, the British government is very supportive if you want to do the research with the drone. So normally, if you want to fly the drone in the university campus, then we can just tell them this is what exactly we want to do. And then they will give the license very quickly. But for commercializations, that is going to be the different, um, different scenarios here. So what I see, what I started to see, by the way, is amazon.com is using, is trying to use the drone to deliver the parcel or to your home. Yeah. And in that case, of course, they need to have this kind of a solid license there. So the short answer is yes, we have the same uh, laws and regulations in Europe and also in the UK. If you want to fly a drone, then you need the license to fly the drone and you need the license for the drone itself to fly it around. So of course, but um, the government is very supportive, including the local government. So normally we don't have any issues as long as we do something with common sense here. And as long as we can propose the health and safety uh, measures to the government. So normally they're quite quick. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi. Uh could I ask uh, two quick questions? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, what the, the first question is like you mentioned about the six uh, top six key research and one of them is the positioning. Yes. Uh, is it possible like, uh, can you elaborate about the uh, positioning research in six key? Yes, of course. Right. Okay. Yes, yeah. Uh, the main thing is for 5G here, yeah, what we are using is we want, uh, we are using the mobile signal. I think the basic, the basic way 
to, to measure the, the, the location of user is you use the signal from three base station and you find where the cutting point or where the intercept point is, and then you can define, okay, this is the, the location of the users. But in 6G, what we would like to do is we would like to use just only one base station there to determine the location of the users. And in this case, what they are trying to include in the base station to find the location of the users, uh, there will be quite a couple of things there. The first one is, of course, they will use radar instead of this uh, intercept point there. They will use radar with beam forming and beam steering uh, technologies there to find the users and learn how the users move and learn the users' um, uh, behaviors uh, with, uh, with the location, with the uh, data, of, with, the, with the quality of service and so on. So the first one is to use the radar, beam steering, beam forming there to detect the location of the user. The second way that people have been talking is the optical approach where you use also leader. Leader is normally used in the car to, to detect the location of the obstacles to, to use in the cruise control system in the car, but they will, they will use leader also in the base station to detect the location of, of the user. And am I missing anything? Yeah, I think uh, radar, beam steering, beam forming, and then a leader to detect the location. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's is pretty much all the technologies that, uh, uh, that will be included in 6G for radio localization and also for uh, location detection of users. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, my, you. My, second, my, my second question is like, uh, do they have any applications of the 6G to the autonomous vehicle? Uh, yes, there is, yes, yes, they have a clear plan for this. So uh, especially for car to car connections, car to base station connection. So, and on top, they want to use car as the mobile base station too. So they have a lot of discussions, but not solid plan as the mo at the moment. So they want to, to connect the car and immerse the car into the 6G uh, communication system. And not just the car, they want to use, uh, they want to connect also the drone and also uh, robots in in the factory. So all these autonomous system will be one of actually the key application for for six G communication. Could, could you give uh, more elaborations like the difference between like five G and six G for the autonomous uh, uh, robot? What 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 would be the difference? The main main yeah yeah. The, the, for example, um, the main application here is the industrial IoT. For 5G here, yeah, the definition is they want to connect things together. They call it Internet of Things. Yeah, they call it Internet of Things. They want to connect a lot of things together. But for 6G, that is going to be a bigger umbrella to cover the Internet of Things here. Mm -hmm. they, they call it Internet of Everything. So okay. in in industries or in industry IoT, for example, you can connect a couple of a couple of uh, equipments or a couple of tools to the server and then or to the to the mobile base station and control them. But for six G, they plan to control everything using the six G network mm -hmm. and also all the process to control and to actuate all these things that they are connecting is to use the AI to automate it, everything there. So at the end of the day, there will be no people involved in controlling, actuating, and servicing all this industrial IoT compared to 5G that people still have to get involved. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is this is this is the main this is the main uh, difference there. Okay. So, so like in other words, like uh, more AI involved in the network. Exactly, exactly. 
Alright, thank you very much. Thank you thank very you. much. Yeah. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Dr. Sadi from Pakistan, and I have a question. Can you ask, please? Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. You just mentioned that for localization, we will be loading a radar, but I believe the radar should be very expensive, and it has like uh, human health hazards because it used to transmit like high uh, with high power. Secondly, how it is possible that with the single source we can do the localization like what parameters we are going to choose so that we can have a single like a uh, uh, base station and with that help we can have uh, the localization and what how you can comment about the accuracy of such work yeah uh the question is this concept actually pops up less than a year for example at huawei they have this type of of concept where they have this harmonized communication where they, in, where they integrate sensor and, and wireless communication, to be honest, it's less than a year now, yeah, up to now. So there is no defined technologies at the moment, to be honest. So, but I'm sure they, they, they are taking this uh, health and safety regulation in mind and they will not, they will not inherit it uh, directly the conventional type of radar that they are using in defense system or they're using in car system to be integrated into the base station. I'm sure they will not do that. So there will be more or less like the radar specifically for 6G, which is following the health and safety regulation. But I cannot give you more information now on what type of power level that it will be radiated. Because as I mentioned, 6G is still in the air at the moment. People talk about it, but there is still no defined standard there. So the answer, the short answer is, there's no standard there. So I cannot say specifically what is gonna be done for the radar system, but for sure it will not be the conventional radar system that will be installed in the base station. And uh, like uh, how we can do like localization with a single source? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, like how we can, we can do the localization with a single source? With the single source? Yeah, so yeah. that's How why, do that? yes, 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 yes. So that's why I said we will have a couple of technologies installed here. For example, the radar in this case, we might not use the antenna arrays as in the conventional radar. So we might use the holographic beam forming there where we have the sub arrays there that we can use a few beams there just in the single base station to detect the location of the, the user. So we have main array, sub array in holographic beam forming here. And then we can use that to detect the location of the user. We can also use holographic beam forming here in combination with leader mm -hmm. to detect the location of, of the user. We can also use RF and millimeter wave in this case, holographic beam forming in, uh, in combination with leader and also in, in uh, combination with the optical technique like the basic or the standard radios, um, no, video system, the way they install the camera there as well. So I'm not talking about single localization system here to be installed in the 6G base station. There will be a lot of sensing um, tools there, as I mentioned, to be installed in the base station. RF microwave, millimeter wave, terahertz, they will be installed there, especially with the holographic beam forming, and there will be LIDAR installed in there. There will also be optical technique like the camera, infrared camera, for example, there will be also, um, it will be also, also installed in, in the 6G base station. So we're talking about installing different types of technologies here to, uh, to, to create the, the complete system there. But yes, on top of that, it will be very expensive. So at the end of the day, I'm sure that they will narrow down the technologies that will be installed to achieve whatever they, 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 they target, like what, less than one centimeter. Um, 
one centimeter uh, accuracy. And also, I think it was to mention here as well that they will have distributed, um, for example, distributed massive MIMO there, they will distribute uh, the massive MIMO in different locations, but associated in the single radio unit that can be also used to, to, to localize the, the user. So there are a lot of ways here. There are a lot of ways here. And uh, the, the, the provider here, the, they will have to choose what is the best for them. But there are a lot of technologies that people like Huawei, Ericsson and Nokia have been talking around about this. And the main candidate for them is the holographic beam forming and the leader. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any question? Is I think it's one or two question is enough because the time is a limitation. Any question or discussion? Me come to me. So, uh, actually, um, morning, actually, I have one question, and it is quite a, a kind of a very general question. Um, as you mentioned during in the presentation, like uh, yeah, definitely AI is going to be the thing that um got a lot of attention. But uh, if we talk about the AI in wireless, there might be some discussion that we need to mention, which is actually the word called like the generalizations. That means uh, if we have just really like one AI, one system, trends uh, train just really one one environment, and then we can use for all. So my question, my question is that uh, is there any kind of this discussion in may not be in detail or just really in the high level in the European session? Um, if I understand you correctly, so this is called open run. Is that correct? The, the, um, the open radio access. Anyway, it's not specifically for the AI, but it's, it's more or less like the whole run system, the radio access system. But of course, that includes the AI there. I'm quite sure yeah, that will not be successful. That will not be so successful now. So there will not be one single AI for all the 6G system. I don't think so. But there will be the internet of AI for the 6G system where AIs are communicating. So that will be the way out because you have to optimize one AI for some certain set of data or some certain set of problems. So, and then of course, that would be the best way to do. And then the, the, this AI can be communicating with the other type of AI that is developed for the different type of problem. And then they communicate to each other to, to create the optimized uh, system. But I doubt it that it will be actually very successful in the future, but let's see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, that definitely that, that would be some problems too, because uh, everything is going to be dynamic, especially in the wireless one. And like, yes. Yeah, that may be the case that whether you are going to use the multi-system of the AI or you are going to use to keep the AI learning all the time. And in yes, that case, it's yes. going to be the same as the optimization problem. And yeah, yes. there is still yes. any questions. So. Yes, and of course, not to mention what kind of computational power you need there, what kind of uh, computational resources you need there because you have to install the learned data somewhere. Yeah, therefore. So, that's why, so there's kind of a contradicting world here in the 6G, they are talking about, okay, we will make this system great. We will create super smart AI, but they, then on the other hand, they claim that this could be zero world where they will consume zero watt of energy, which is of course, is a bit contradicting each other in a sense. So, but as I mentioned, there is no, there is no standard at the moment. So let's see what people will develop. I would say, in my opinion, some of this concept will be dropped out. And in my opinion, the role of the AI in the 6G will be less than what they claim. <clears throat> because I, I mean, the conventional way of developing the system is we see that 3G is bad. So that's why people develop the 4G to cover the 3Gs, and then the 4G is, is running. And then Huawei says by itself that 5G is not, 
is not perfect. So that's why they want 6G to cover this 5G. And then in my opinion, in my honest opinion, 6G for me is going to be more, yeah, it's going to be more like people can, whatever people can do to cover the holes in 5G. This is my opinion, but maybe people would do more to come to develop a completely new system, but I don't think so. Because we have to think about the operator like true. Yeah, or definitely. You need to, you need to see any kind. Yeah. Yeah, because they don't, the thing is, they don't want to make a lot of profit, but they don't want to invest so much money there. So if we develop the whole new system, let's say we have to update to the whole new system in every 10 years, they will say they will not do it because they don't have money to pay for it. So let's see how things will develop. But in, in my opinion, 6G will be more, a little bit more or less kind of uh, build up on 5G and make things much more comprehensive. Yeah, sure thing. Everything should be backward compatible. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, before the end of this session, uh, Ajahn Lajakon, do you have any announcement for the next session or the next silly, the 5G, 6G? Do you oh. have any oh. announcement? Uh, uh, thank you, Ajahn Sarawud, for making this event possible. And really, it's a great honor to, you know, to have this privilege from Dr. Katapong Songjit from uh, University of Leeds to deliver a, such a wonderful talk. I think today uh, people have gathered from different, uh, you know, uh, 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 disciplines. You know, uh, there are many, many wireless communication people in Thailand. I think most of us are in this room. And, and, and also, I think we have people from the digital economy to come and see, you know, including even the, the AIS people. So maybe, uh, maybe I can, uh, I would like to ask uh, Ajahn Natapong Somjit whether uh, can we take this opportunity to, to do something that meaningful by interconnecting uh, you know, people together in good, by you know, using uh, European uh, funding or, or even the, the support. Or, or the policy from the digital economy. How, how can we can we can we create yes. some something from today? Uh, yes, 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 definitely. I think they, I think that there are there are a couple of uh, resources that you could actually do. So first of all, the first um, funding agency that could fund this type of research is the British Council. So and they have the funding launched every year or even even more often with uh, institu institutional links with uh, research exchange and everything so uh, i think they have more than one course per year between thailand and the uk so this is the british british one first so that is one the source of funding that we we can have together and of course it is jointly funded by the british government and also the thai government so that is one of the things that you could do. And the second one is from the European Commission. So for the European Commission, that is uh, the Horizon Europe. That is a current, that is a current uh, framework now. So you have a, a couple of channels here that you could do. The first one is called um, the, the funding for the medium and low income country, where of course Thailand is included in the medium income country, where we can drive, uh, where we can write um, the proposal together there. They don't have any specific call for Thailand, unfortunately, but Thailand falls within this scope in the middle income country that we can, we can write uh, the, the proposal together. And of course the funding we are expecting around something like one to three million euros. And that is something like, I don't know, maybe 30 million bucks up to almost a hundred million bucks there that we, can, that, we can, that we can spend. And then a little bit more individual is the Marie Curie action where uh, Thailand can, not Thailand, but a researcher from Thailand can apply for funding to come to the EU and also the UK, of course, 
to, to conduct the research for a year or, or two there. So there, there, are, there are a few opportunities there that we, that we can talk about funding for research. So actually I have been, I have been collaborating with quite a few people already in Thailand. So we have published a lot of uh, papers, mostly in IEEE uh, transactions already. Uh, I, I have one uh, connection or um, well, I, 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 let's say I have a couple of connections there, like uh, with Professor Mitchai in uh, Prince of Songkla University. We have been doing research together from time to time. Uh, I have been in collaboration with Professor Prayut Akala Ektarin. So we have published more than 10 IEEE transactions from our collaboration for a couple of years. So and I don't mind to collaborate more. Don't, don't, so then, forget, don't forget me. Yes, but we don't publish anything together. So that's the <laughs> okay, problem. Okay. Okay. So I think there's, there's the opportunity here for collaboration and I don't mind to, 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 to collaborate. On, on the other hand, I would be so honored that we can actually collaborate and publish a lot of things together. So for example, apart from the 6G communication, we have to break this down. For example, I'm developing something like um, holographic beam forming. This is a, this is a prom promising technology that even Bill Gates is funding these technologies for, for the US company. So holographic beam forming that we are trying to develop here. We want to have the more people on board. So I have a lot of people involved, but we, we still need more. And I, 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 I would say, why shouldn't Thailand join the consortium and develop this, this kind of uh, future technologies together? I think there are a lot of opportunities there. I'm trying to push, to be honest, I'm trying to push for the collaboration with Thai researchers and the Thai government. But from time to time, I find it a little bit difficult to, to chase it up. That's the thing. Maybe, so, but maybe. if you... Uh, may, may I ask uh, Dr. Pasu, uh, who is now the, 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 with the MDES, right? I'm not sure if he's still, or, or Dr. P, who, who, who has asked a, a couple of questions. Maybe they have a good policy because we are now almost everyone in the wireless you know, sector together here. Yes, uh, yes. อาจารย์พอจะมีคํานะครับผมว่าจริงๆจะเป็นคําถามที่จริงๆเมื่อสักครู่ผมก็ยกมือกับถามจะถามอาจารย์ Academic Science แต่ว่ามี I get involved ไอ้พวก Cutting Edge ไอ้พวก 6G กับพวก Vendor รายใหญ่ๆของของโลกไม่แน่ใจว่าจะมีคําแนะนําอะไรสําหรับเมืองไทยมั้ยนอกจากการไอ้ตัวตัว B5G เนี่ยก็คือไปช่วยเค้าแพลนด้วยว่าเทคโนโลยีของหัวเวย์เนี่ยมันควรจะเป็นยังไงแต่ปัญหาคือผมมองว่าเมืองไทยอ่ะฟาซิลิตี้ผมมองว่าค่อนข้างพร้อมนะหมายถึงว่า 
พวก research facility ทั้งหลายแหละมี network analyzer ผมมองว่ามันก็มันมันก็ดีเลยแหละครับแต่หลายครั้งอ่ะผมผมทำผมทำ research กับทางพนักครเหนือแล้วก็ใช้ facility ของพนักครเหนือวัดก็บ่อยบ่อยครั้งไปผมมองว่าปัญหาที่อาจจะไม่พร้อมก็คืออันนี้ผมอันนี้ผมอาจจะขอขอพูดตรงนิดนึงนะครับปัญหาที่อาจจะไม่พร้อมก็คือผมมองว่า my mindset ของของของที่ทางเมืองไทยเนี่ยอาจจะอาจจะยังไม่พร้อมผมมองว่าคนที่อยากทำรีเสิร์ชแล้วตีพิมพ์แล้วก็พัฒนาระบบจริงๆเนี่ยผมมองว่ามีหลายท่านแต่ในขณะเดียวกันผมก็มองว่าก็มีอีกหลายท่านที่ก็ยังยังยังไปไม่ถึงจุดตรงนั้นแต่ว่าเอาเอาเป็นว่าถ้าเราสมมุติว่าเราเริ่มกันที่จุดเล็กๆก่อนในในในทางไวเลสที่จะนอกจากทำจะทำคอลลาบอเรตกับทางไทยแลนด์แล้วเนี่ยผมมองว่าที่ผมกำลังจะทำอยู่อันนี้คือแพลนนะครับที่ผมกำลังจะทำอยู่ตอนนี้ก็คือผมกำลังจะตั้งเป็นเป็นสปินออฟคอมพานีจากจากแ a บที่ผมผมเป็นเป็นดีเรกเตอร์อยู่เนี่ยผมผมผมผมดูแ a บทางวายเลสคอมมิวนิเคชันอยู่ที่มหาวิทยาลัยลีสนะครับผมจะตั้งเป็นสปินออฟคอมพานีแล้วผมก็อยากจะทำเหมือนกับว่าเป็นคอลลาบอเรตกับที่เมืองไทยก็คือเหมือนกับลิงก์กันระหว่างเมืองไทยกับกับทางอังกฤษหรือทาง EU แล้วก็ทำเป็น Research b i t หมายถึงว่าอขอทุนวิจัยจากทั้งทางเมืองไทยด้วยแล้วก็ EU ด้วยเพื่อที่จะมาพัฒนาอันนี้คือไม่ได้ restrict อยู่กับที่ทัวร์ 6G นะครับอาจจะเป็นอาจจะเป็นอย่างอื่นด้วยเพราะว่าอย่างที่ทางเมืองไทยเอง policy ก็มีถึงถึงขั้นที่จะไปเป็น space science ไปเป็นทางอวกาศแล้วผมก็มองว่ามันยังมีมันยังมีรูปทางอีกหลายอย่างที่เราจะสามารถ develop ทาง wireless ตรงนี้ไปเป็นไปเป็น benefit ที่เมืองไทยได้ยกตัวอย่างเช่นเราสามารถที่จะทำวิจัยร่วมกันแล้วก็พัฒนาฮาร์ดแวร์พัฒนาซอฟต์แวร์แล้วก็เอาไปเป็นแอปพลิเคชันที่ใช้จริงที่เมืองไทยยกตัวอย่างเช่นนะครับยกตัวอย่างเช่นตอนนี้โปรเจกต์ที่ผมทำอยู่ก็คือ smart cities self repairing cities ก็คือเมืองที่สามารถซ่อมแซมตัวเองได้ก็คือมีคนพูดเรื่องสมาร์ทซิตี้กันไปเยอะแล้วว่าเมืองอัจฉริยะอัจฉริยะยังไงพูดไปเยอะแล้วแต่ว่าโปรเจกต์ที่ผมรันอยู่ตอนนี้ประมาณ7ล้านปอนด์มันประมาณเท่าไหร่ละ350ล้านกว่าบาทก็คือมันจะเป็นเมืองอัจฉริยะที่สามารถซ่อมแซมตัวเองได้ยกตัวอย่างเช่นในระบบท่อน้ำเนี่ยนะครับอาจารย์ในเมืองใหญ่ๆอย่างเช่นกรุงเทพเนี่ยความสลับซับซ้อนเนี่ยมันมีเยอะแล้วทีนี้เราต้องการที่จะตรวจว่าไอ้ท่อน้ําแต่ละจุดเนี่ยมันมีคอร์ชันมันเริ่มที่จะชำรุดมันเริ่มที่จะเสียมันเริ่มที่จะอะไรยังไงในปัจจุบันเนี่ยก็คือต้องขุดถนนแล้วก็ดูอ๋อท่อแตกตรงนี้ซ่อมตรงนี้แต่ว่าโปรเจกต์ที่เรากําลังทําอยู่ร่วมกับการประปาของอังกฤษนะครับอันนี้คือเป็นโปรเจกต์ที่ทําจริงร่วมกับการประปาของอังกฤษก็คือเราส่งหุ่นยนต์ที่เป็นสวอมโรบอทคือหุ่นยนต์หลายๆตัวเป็นร้อยตัวเข้าไปแล้วก็ให้หุ่นยนต์เนี่ยมันวิ่งไปตามท่อแล้วก็มีเซ็นเซอร์ดีเทคเป็นวายเด็ดเซ็นเซอร์ดีเทคว่าอ๋อท่อตรงนี้เริ่มเริ่มกร่อนแล้วเริ่มผุแล้วเริ่มต้องซ่อมหุ่นยนต์เนี่ยก็จะจัดการซ่อมโดยที่ไม่ต้องมานั่งขุดจะไม่มีการขุดท่อไม่มีการขุดอะไรทั้งสิ้นนะครับเป็น non invasive system ซึ่งตรงนั้นเนี่ยจะป้องกันการเขาเรียกว่าอะไรล่ะภาษาไทยมันจะไม่มี disruption ของการใช้รถใช้ถนนมันจะไม่มี disruption ของเมืองนะครับให้ให้ให้คนทั่วไปได้เห็นเพราะทุกอย่างเนี่ยมันจะเกิดขึ้นใต้ดินในท่อโดยการใช้โรบอทซึ่งตรงเนี้ยมันจะมีมันจะมี challenge ต่างๆเนี่ยเข้าไปให้ได้มากค่อนข้างมากก็คือหนึ่งท่อยาวเป็นเป็นร้อยกิโลเมตรโรบอทจะเอาพลังงานมาจากไหนสองคือจะส่งผ่านอ wireless communication ใต้น้ําได้ยังไงสามจะมีเรดิโอโลเคอลไลเซชันได้ยังไงเพราะว่าในท่อไม่มี GPS คือตรงนี้เราสามารถที่จะพัฒนาระบบร่วมกันขึ้นมาเป็นระบบใหญ่ได้นะครับผมมองว่าอันนี้เป็นตัวอย่างหนึ่งที่เราจะสามารถทำงานร่วมกันได้ครับครับอาจารย์อาจารย์มีอะไรเพิ่มเติมไหมครับอาจารย์ดรพีไม่มีอะไรครับขอบคุณครับอาจารย์รัชกรครับขอบคุณครับอาจารย์ชาลวุฒิก็น่าจะปิดปิดงานก่อนไหมครับได้ครับแล้วเราค่อยค่อยค่อยคุยกันได้ครับ
เอ่อพูดภาษาไทยแล้วกันขอบคุณพี่พี่เอเนาะพี่ดรนัทพงศ์นะครับเดี๋ยววันหลังอาจจะขอยืมตัวมามาช่วยงานอีกทีนะพี่กลับมาเมืองไทยเดี๋ยวจะจะจะจะตอบแทนบุญคุณนะพี่เลี้ยงข้าวยินดีรับยินดีรับใช้ครับยินดีรับก็จริงๆอ่าเราเดี๋ยวเราผมกับอาจารย์รัชกรเนาะอาจจะมีซีรีส์ที่ที่เพิ่มเติมมากกว่านี้แต่ว่าเดี๋ยวรอดูก่อนว่าจะเป็นยังไงคือเราจะพัฒนาไปพร้อมๆกัน 5G 6G ไปพร้อมๆกันนะครับว่านั่นส่วนถ้าใครนะครับมีมีอย่างเช่นอยากจะจัดสัมมนาหรืออะไรที่ที่เกี่ยวข้องที่เป็นเทรนเทรนเนี้ยก็อาจจะส่งอีเมลมาหาผมหาจราชกรหาอาจารย์รัชกรก็ได้ครับเดี๋ยวเราจะได้จะได้อินิชิเอตตัวตัวไอสัมมนาดีๆอย่างนี้ขึ้นมาอีกเนาะนะครับโอเคนะครับก็ก็วันนี้ผมก็ขอขอบคุณอีกทีนะครับผู้ฟังทุกท่านนะ thank you very much for all audience And uh, it's next time. Maybe we have the theory of the development for the 5G and 6G technology. So if you have uh, any like uh, the good uh, seminar, web seminar, please send me an uh, email or the send the, like a question or the, like a comment to me or the Ajahn Rajakorn. Maybe to, we can uh, initiate or create some the webinar like uh, today. Okay. And thank you very much again. ขอบคุณมากมากครับถ่ายรูปไหมจะถ่ายรูปไหมหรือไม่ต้องถ่ายแล้วเออไม่ต้องถ่ายก็ได้ครับผมว่าไม่ไม่มีปัญหาอะไรหรอกครับได้วันวันนี้มีเอ่อมี participant ประมาณเอ่อ eighty people ประมาณแปดสิบท่านครับขอบคุณมากมากครับอาจารย์แล้ววิดีโอเรามีเอ่อแชร์ให้ภายหลังไหมครับมีครับถ้าถ้านั่นเดี๋ยวผมโพสต์ให้ผมเลคคอร์ดอยู่ครับขอบคุณครับอาจารย์ขอบคุณมากครับขอบคุณมากมากครับขอบคุณครับคุณครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับ